I am an old man waiting to go to heaven. And I've been doing World University for many years. And I, and I enjoy life because life has so many perspectives of which we only understand some of them. I learned in school that I'm not very smart and I'm still living with that idea. And then I'm gradually developing how good it is not to be smart. Because if you're smart, then you think you are something. But to be a human being is to be very little. And that's what I am. Why I'm a philosopher? I'm a philosopher because I ask questions. I ask questions about life and death. And I do not accept any answers. That's why I continue to ask questions to my fellow beings and to myself and to the world and to God. I ask questions. I can, I can tell you this was uh, five years where our neighbors from the south came and, and lived with us. And I tried to be friends with them, even if they were not always so friendly. But I met especially a German officer, and we met at the door of our church, and we went in there together, and we did that for a long time. We went to church and we prayed together, and that friendship helped my life because I was in the underground movement and I had some illegal papers in my pockets. And one time the German soldiers found that out and they took me to, to the headquarters and they were ready to send me south to a concentration camp. But I say, hey, just a minute, I know Dr. Meyer. Can she Dr. Meyer? Naturally, Dr. Meyer was the next in charge here in Soho in Denmark. And I told them that Dr. Meyer and I prayed together. So they told me, Du bist frei, Heil Hitler. I said, thank you, ich bin frei, Heil Hitler. That was one of the strongest stories during the occupation in Denmark. Life is always livable, even when it's not easy. Life has its own purpose. And the more we think about that, the more deep it becomes. What makes life unlivable is when I'm not quiet and when I do not visit to my neighbors and when I do not think that life is greater than I am. My definition of happiness is contact with dear people, is contact with a few single ones, but it's the contact that I feel that I can fulfill my duty. Unhappiness is a, is a stupid thing. People think they're unhappy, but when they think about it, they change their mind. Unhappiness is not to know God, and it's not to know your neighbor, and it's not to honor your father and mother. That happened to me the 24th of July, 1921. That day I was baptized. And this means that God told me that I'm his child. And when you're God's child, nothing can go wrong with you. That has not happened yet, but some difficult things I experienced 
when my son Rasmus came, was seven years old, and he just started in school, and he came home from school and said, Father, will you please go to me to the school tonight because we have a concert and here are the tickets. And I did not take time to do that. That's a sad story when you don't listen to your son when your son needs your help. I have not done that yet. So I will tell you when it happens. I am not afraid. Because Jesus said, fear not, I am with you. But of course I can be anxious and I can be afraid of that something bad will happen in the world and to me. But, but I, I live fearless. My biggest wish is peace on earth. My friend John Lennon told me about that. And peace on earth, I think that is a wish which live in all us common people. We want peace. And that is very deep and that will happen. He came to see me at the World University together with, with Yoko. And um, Yoko's daughter was with us at the college for some time. And one day, John came into the kitchen and he said, hello, I said, what's your name? My name is John. And he said, what do you do? He said, I make music. I didn't think he looked for a special musician. So he went over and put a record on the record player and he said, I made this music. I said, okay. So ask me, what do I do? I make a world university. So our questions to each other, a Danish farm boy and an English working boy, we became friends at that moment. And that lasted the last 10 years he lived until one night a friend called and said, John just died. And it came to me spontaneously. John was ready because the first five years I was more or less working with him. But the last five years, he tried to work with me a lot. He said, you should not sit at the UN. You should sit home in Denmark and talk with students about life. And that, that became our friendship. We, the many years in New York together, we, we visited with us usually on Saturday. And John could make a wear a good cup of tea while Yoko was shopping, but that was the only thing he could make. But we could make good conversation with each other about peace on earth. I was consulting. I was an entry. We had made the association for world universities where I was the president, and the United Nations invited us to come to, to the UN and to take part in a general assembly meeting and come up with new ideas. And we did come up with many new ideas at the UN, like for instance, when the, the UN is speaking about its plans, it's, it realizes that it can do so much, but there are many things about peace on earth the UN cannot do. So we try to bring big business to, together bring big business together and try to make a cooperative. And we sent that invitation out to big business around the world. And I was really encouraged. One day I got a telephone call from, from Georgia, South America, no. Uh, and, and she told me, I am the president, secretary of Coca-Cola. I said, okay, I like Coke. But he asked if he can be part of the Worldwide Federation of Businessmen trying to do the peaceful things which the UN cannot do. And thus it's important that we both support the formal organizations 
and the informal things. And that I have the luck to be able to do in my old age. Belongingness. Belongingness. We belong together unconditionally. That's the meaning of life. Necessity. Myself. And I begin to, to work at that. But by the way, you, you do ask kind of good questions. The Lord himself, the Lord herself did it. God created heaven and earth. And that is a common God for all human beings. God created the world and us in his image. And that's why we have always hopeful things in the future. To be in heaven. I expect to be in the kingdom of God, to be in heaven. And there I expect to meet all people from now and before. And since there is time enough after, after death, I can get to know all people in the world and in the future. And I look forward to have a good time with them. I have written songs and hymns and poems and love letters and a few books. But what, I, what is most important is probably Whatever I have written, it is not good enough. But the now, the present, that is eternity. And we as human beings can learn to dig so deep into the present as we feel universal and together. Why are you such a good man? Why are you so wonderful? 